Okay, let me just quickly go back to what we did last week. So last week we had a we had a look at um, USD CHF, and we sold right. So we sold from around this region and then sold all the way down here. And um, price came to the entry zone, did a stuff and came to the take profit zone because this was the uh, exit point that we had set uh, for last week. So and uh, price is going back up again, but uh, we're not catching this move because we never anticipated that we only went for the down move so we went for the up move then we went for the down move but we never went for this one so this week um there's a few things i want to look at but first from the bat let's go to check uh bitcoin right so um i don't know if you guys took the bitcoin trade because i just literally posted it up you know for um you know for a few moments before i actually took the trade myself i was having a conversation with one of my friends and uh, we've been planning to take Bitcoin from on the fourth for a long time, so we'll be waiting till the fourth. And uh, we took the entry on the third, just before uh, the fourth, and um, it's been beautiful. Now let me just quickly go and show you what happened, why we did this. So, looking at Bitcoin uh, seasonality, we see that up until you know before the fourth, price is going down. And then price, when price got to the fourth right here, price started moving up. And if we look at Bitcoin chart right here, now this is the weekly chart. I'm gonna switch that quickly to the daily. Um, you know, Bitcoin price has actually been going down, uh, stipulated by the seasonality. And then come the fourth right here, look at that massive spike, because that's when all three alliance to go to the upside so if you've been watching the news a lot of people are saying oh bitcoin is picking up now bitcoin is going up you have to be very careful because most of the people in the, like most of the people that talk about this stuff and post about this stuff they're quite impulsive they just react you know they don't really see what's going to happen before it happens so you don't want to go in with the crowd you want to go in before the crowd so when the hype is going and when people are buying you're riding off of that wave you know so you don't get caught out. So that's the beauty of the seasonality tool. And just by using the seasonality alone, we know that we're going to trade Bitcoin and we're holding. Ideally, I want to come out at, um, I want to come out at the 50 moving average on the daily, somewhere around here. Um, I don't really use uh, this thing that much, um, trading view that much. So um, let me go and find, the 50 here so you have to bear with me because i don't really use this uh uh trading view platform that much so it's gonna be it will be a bumpy for me so let's just do 50. uh i always make my 50 red so just to show you guys what i'm, I'm, I'm doing right so bitcoin is almost at a 50. this is where my take profit is my first take profit so i went in somewhere around here at the bottom i did post a position on um on a telegram and then i went in right here and i'm coming out right here the main reason i'm coming out right here is because price is going to receive some resistance every time price got there got resistance so i don't want to play with it a little bit i just wanted to touch that just a tiny bit more and then i'll be out of that trade you know probably by tomorrow or latest on the 8th before bitcoin does a little bit of consolidation and then we we'll probably back in from the 14th right so on the 14th, we'll be going back in. So what I expect is once price touch that price, do a little bit of drop into the bottom, you know, come come somewhere around here and then price start leaving that region once more. So if you're not able to catch, you know, the if you're not able to catch uh, the, the up move, the first initial up move from here to here, then you can catch the next one that's coming around the uh, 14th of the month. Uh, so approximately eight days from now so you can catch that going all the way to the top okay so that would be the ideal uh one for bitcoin okay so so far is there any questions in regards to this does anyone have any questions in regards to bitcoin or something we did in the past before we move on to anything new for today if you do have questions please let me know so uh, i don't keep going back and forth back and forth back and forth now, for the guys that are new, this is called the seasonality tool. And basically, the seasonality tool just works like uh, it works like this. 
when let me give you an example of when there's a and I've, I've used this example so many times i know a lot of you might be tired of hearing it by now um when there's christmas the price of uh turkey and chicken tends to go up when there's a ramadan period for the muslim the price of cattle and cows tend to go up and after that period it goes down so every single every single asset in the market does exactly the same thing there's seasons for it to go up there's seasons for things to go down and what we do is we ride based on that season so we wait for that season to occur and then we ride the market based on that season now we don't use the tool alone even though the tool is super accurate i mean you just see what it done with bitcoin you know but um <clears throat> We use it in conjunction with uh, the COT and also the probability tool to help us uh, defi- and decipher where we should go in the market. Okay, so that being said, let, let's move on to today. If you want me to analyze a specific pair, please uh, post it in the chart and I will look into that and I'll carry out that analysis. Okay, so um, off the bat, what I normally do before I start anything is I normally check the COT report. Now the COT report shows us what the commercials are doing. So the commercials are people like the big banks, the producers of uh, certain goods, like people that mine gold, for example, or platinum or copper, or whatever it is that they're mining, you know, or people that are big companies like Apple, um, yeah, what's it called? Microsoft and all of that stuff, uh, Amazon, you know, they do trade internationally with different uh different countries and different organizations. And by, by law, they have to report what they're trading uh, to the government, especially in the States. Uh, they have to re- report it to T- CFTC. And our job is just basically to see what they're doing and piggyback off their move, okay? Oops, I think I just opened Halo, so um, uh, pardon me, but uh, give me a moment just in case that opened. Yeah, apologies guys, I did open Halo for a second. <laughs> I accidentally click on Halo. So um, I hope you guys didn't see my Halo. I'm not trying to play games. I, I really assure you that. Just trying to get it to get off my screen. Give me two seconds. Okay. Okay, we're back. Uh, apologies for that. Let me just try to close that so that doesn't happen again. Okay, so... um. You want me to check NASDAQ, GBP, USD, AED, JPY, uh, dollar index. Okay, I think there's a correlation between NASDAQ and AED, JPY. Uh, bro, I would actually check the correlation between NASDAQ and AED, JPY, but I will do that. Please do well to check gold. Okay, I'll check gold as well. So um, let's load up the COT report and see. We'll start, uh, you know, uh, as they align, basically. So we'll take that up like that. So we start with gold. Check CHF. JPY, Euro. I'm actually trading Euro, by the way, this week. So um, hopefully the COT report is more favorable to where I'm trying to get it to go. So and uh, so, we'll quickly just look at all all the things you requested for. I do it as, as quick, quick as I can. So whatever it is I want me to look into gold, um, we won't trade gold because both positions, like there's literally no positions going and go like short you know and long doesn't really add up so off the bat gold literally gets uh, disqualified i won't touch gold at the moment because there's no direction for the long side and the short side this report was on the second so for that reason i'm gonna let go go so gold is out of the bat um sometimes this thing do take quite a while to load we're just gonna wait a little bit um See which other one we got. I've also noticed that once I put on Zoom, Zoom tends to clash with my my speed of um, of my internet for some reason. I don't know why. When I'm not using it, it doesn't clash, but when I am, it does clash. So, do I apologize for the slow uh, pace of my? my internet so uh chf we have chf on cot going long i'm not sure if anyone requested for chf but it's good to have it so uh chf we're gonna go long on that yeah right so and people that don't know what i'm looking at or what i'm looking for in, in this specific um report i'm gonna show i'm literally gonna show you what i'm looking at right now in a second 
for the guys that have been with me, you have to bear with me. I know you guys have been with me three years. You're tired of me looking about at the same thing over and over again. But that's how the money comes in. You know, the CLT report is very accurate. So for the guys that are very new, this is what I'm looking at. I'm only just looking at the commercial side of the stuff, of things right here. Commercials, and I'm looking at where they're going long or short. Long means going up. Short means they're going down. You know, that's how they say the stuff in professional manner. So it's not really buy and sell, but it's literally long and short. So from uh, CHF, what I can see is the commercial guys, the big boys are literally selling CHF. And what I look at is just the changes. I don't look at this. I don't look at that. I just look at the changes, what they're doing recently. And that's the only thing I focus on, which is uh, they're selling uh, JPY. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for JPY short. And I know a lot, of, a lot of you guys are actually quite used to oh, people opening up charts and just going, you know, just going up and drawing support and resistance and all of that. I don't do that. That's too long. It's stress, basically. You don't need that. And if 90% if or 99% of people are doing that, you know you're doing something wrong. So I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything that goes on in the market. But what I know is I know something that does work. You know, so I don't really check the charts that much i just literally look at these data as this information and then i use that to depict what i should do in the market as we go along so um the next thing is euro right this doesn't look good because i really wanted to trade euro badly but because they're taking out positions from the long and also taking out positions from the short side this is very very risky for me at the moment so I've taken a trade that might be super risky for me. I was anticipating they go short, but they're not going short. Uh, these guys are going short, and I don't trust these guys, these non-commercial guys. I don't really trust their, their judgment. So um, fingers crossed, maybe USD goes long and still keep me in the euro trade. If not, I might consider closing my euro position because of I've, I've been too forward, basically. All right, let me reload these charts. Which one is this? CAD, they're going short. It's telling me something is about to happen with the CAD. Hopefully it aligns with um, the seasonality. So CAD, they're going short. Uh, USD, fingers crossed, please go long. And uh, pounds, they're going long. So we might actually have a good variation of asset this week. AUD. Now, situations like this, when you have some going long, some going short, and this is very risky. So I will still write it down, but I'll put a star next to it because I really want to just see a clear direction. I don't like when they're conflicted. So they're going short. So I'm just going to put a star right next to that just to remind me that these guys are doing this thing okay usd have a little bit of buying power they normally don't do too much with the usd i don't know why so uh usd is going long a little bit so i'm going to stick with my trade might still be valid so and then nzd ah this is quite confusing as well just like the aud so nzd they're going long also and i'm going to put a star next to that so I'm just gonna go back to what you guys have said I should check. So we should check GBP USD. So GBP USD might be in play. We got GBP going long, USD going long. I don't really like that, but uh, we'll check what the uh, what the seasonality and probability I have to say about that. Then AUD, we're going. Uh, I haven't checked that. AUD is going short, and also that's going short. I don't still like the combination. NASDAQ, I'm going to get to that in a second. Dollar index, we're going to move to that in a second. Oh, two people actually requested a UGJPY. So, uh, right. So let's go and check. Uh, let's go and check. We're done with this. Uh, so let's go check the seasonality. So now the seasonality tool, you know, um, I've already shown you guys what it does. So I'm going to show that again one more time. So we're going to go back to, let's go check GBP USD. Someone requested for that. And basically what this is not it to show us is, is it the right season for pounds to be going up? Is it the right season for USD to be going up? If it is the right season for them to be going up, we're going to be following that direction. So what we can see right here for GBP is, um, and the way I use this tool is I have to make sure that all three are like the 45 years, the five, 15 years, and the five years, 
all three have to align. If they don't align and face the same direction, I would not take that trade. You know, so like here, for example, they all align right here. And if you take that trade, you're going to profit. You're going to be in this trade for like a month plus, but you're going to profit quite a lot from that move. And, you know, from here, for example, you're going to profit a lot from it because of uh, they're all aligned together. When they're not in alignment, like here, I have to be very careful. I would not take any trade in regards to that. So looking at GBP from here, we are on the sixth right now. So we're somewhere around here right now. And looking at this, the, the 15 years aligns, the 45 aligns for a little bit of short power in, in GBP, but five years does not really align the way I want it. So I'll be very, very careful. And also, if you keep in mind, they're going long on GBP. So I'm, I'm presuming they're anticipating this move on the 10 right here. You know, So we might see a little bit of buying power coming in the GBP, but because of the alignment isn't smooth at the moment, I will not be touching GBP for now. So let me compare that to USD. If we have our alignment in USD and, uh, you know, it's also pointing in the direction that we want, then GBP USD might actually go short. So if GBP is going long, then GBP USD might be going short. But we have to still confirm that with probability. So um, on the 16th, on the 6th, so we're right here right now. Now, GBP is meant to start going long from the 4th, right? And that long is meant to last up until the ninth, right here. So uh, right now we are on the sixth, right? So we're somewhere around here right now. So GBP doesn't really align, um, USD doesn't really align till about, huh, it's very tricky. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. So fourth, fifth. So we're right here. So we might actually lose some buying power. I would have loved to go in on the ninth to go for a USD buy, but it, the move isn't long enough. So for that for that reason, I'm literally not going to be touching this too. GBP USD, I will not touch this week. I'm not going to touch GBP USD this week. So I'm going to take them out of the, the you know the assets that I'm going to be looking at this week, just because of the alignment isn't smooth. And you have to understand something, guys. I know a lot of you might have been taught to, you know, um, trade every single time. You have to see a little bit of support and resistance, jump on it, go on it. No, the market isn't like that. The people that really make money from the market are people that don't trade every single day. You know, uh, a lot of people think, oh, you have to trade every single day to make money. But the truth is, if you trade every single day, you're going to lose money. That's literally just facts. There's sometimes there is an opportunity in the market. I know the market is very big and there's always opportunity going on somewhere, but in the pairs that you might be looking at, there might not be an opportunity. So the best thing is stay away when the opportunity isn't clear. Only come back when it's all clear so you secure more money rather than you risking yourself to trade it. So, um, bro, someone wanted me to look at, Mr. Uza wanted me to look at dollar index. I already looked at the USD, so it's not really aligned at the moment, which is what we're looking at right here on the 6th. <clears throat> On the sixth right here, it's not really aligned for now. So we're going to let it go. We're just literally going to let it go. It might end up going up. It might end up going down, but we won't trade it until we find a perfect alignment, maybe somewhere around here on the 24th. Then we might actually go into that asset. Or maybe on the 16th, we might go into that asset. We don't really take the small drops like this. We don't really want that. We want the big move. So for that case, uh, dollar index is not in play at the moment. Okay, so which then leaves us, someone wants me to check AUD. So we're going to check AUD, then we're going to check JPY. Let's see. And I'm cool, to be quite frank. If we don't find any alignment this week, I'm really cool. It's not stress. You know, you don't want to go into the market if you don't have to. You know, you get a week off to do whatever you want to do. So let's check AUD and see what's happening. So from the fourth, AUD was meant to lose a little bit of strength, but on the ninth, AUD might actually gain some strength. And if we look at AUD right here, they're literally selling AUD. So on the ninth would be, if I'm not mistaken, Wednesday. AUD is meant to go long on the ninth, but because the COT is saying it should go short, I would not touch AUD for now. But let's check JPY, let's check the correspondent. If JPY, as a short move coming for for itself then we might actually sell AUDJ uh, we might actually buy AUDJPY so let's see okay 
So we're right here, um, somewhere around here, sixth. Okay. So on the, let me let me zoom in. I can't really see this properly. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, fifth, sixth. Yeah, so around the around the eighth, right here. JPY seems to be going short, right? So if we look at the five years around the eighth, it seems to drop, then consolidate, then just consolidate a range. But in the 15 years, we see a clearer drop. You know, we see a pattern of drop. And then 44 years, we do see a drop as well. So AUD JPY, we might have something for AUD JPY. So we got yeah, seasonality JPY short. So I know some people <laughs> will be looking at me like, guy, you haven't pulled up the chart yet. I'm going to get to the chart in a second. Uh, hold on. This is literally helping me assess all 30, 32 or 29 pairs without having to open the chart yet. So with the AUD JPY, we might actually have something because we have JPY going short. We have JPY also going short on the COT, but we also have AUD going short on the COT. So what we need last is the probability. So if we check the probability tool and we see um, if we see an asset going, the AED JPY going, you know, along, going in our direction on the long side, then we might be good to go. So, JPY. So this is a third tool called probability tool. And what this tool shows us is it shows us the percentage, our win percentage on specific days if we go in a specific direction. So we're looking from the eighth, on AUD JPY. So we know that JPY is going short. Uh, COT, we know that it's going short on JPY, uh, on uh, seasonality. And if it's going short, a JPY is going short, AUD will definitely go long, you know, because one has more um, selling pressure. So looking at it from the seventh, it's telling me I have a 70% chance of winning if I go long, which is buy. So if I buy from the seventh, I have a 70% chance of winning on that day, then 67, 59, 52, 56. So throughout this entire week, it looks good for me. Uh, and even next week looks even much, it still looks good. So I have up on this week till next week. And if I check the seasonality for this, this is meant to drop up until let's say around here on the 20th. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be, yeah. So this week up until next week. So if we load up the chart now and look into AUD JPY, uh, where is it? Right here. So if we look into AUD JPY, we might actually find something. So let me just go. Huh. Oh yeah, there's all, also one more tool. I use this tool, Williams, to help me decipher if the market is gonna go long or short very soon. So a prime example would be somewhere around here when this was pointing short, it's already going short. It literally shows you what's gonna happen before it happens. It's not always correct. It's about 60 to 70% correct. So, and then the short happens and then shows that there's going to be a spike. A spike happens, shows there's going to be a little drop and a little drop happen, little spike happen, drop happen. So you get the gist anyway. So this is showing me that price is actually meant to drop further. Now, price has already started dropping. Now, I don't know how far it's going to drop, but I would love to see this point up a little bit, maybe from tomorrow. If they start pointing up from tomorrow, then AUD JPY, we're going to trade this as long. So. For that reason, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do plain chart with uh yeah man, I'm gonna delete this for a second. Does someone have any question? Yeah, you get the replay, bro. Uh if your network is off, uh, I'll upload the replay. So um right, so AD JPY price is already coming down here. Uh so this would be a support region. Price has already left. So price broke away from this region, came back to retest, went again, and then came back to do a double bottom somewhere around here. So here, here, and price left. It's going to come and retest. And what we're expecting now is AED going back up again. So within this zone, we're expecting AUD to come somewhere within here and then start moving back up. Now, to help me decipher exactly where price is going to go, what I normally do is I normally just have this. Uh, 
Okay, beautiful. So just by putting this, it's just a little basic supply and, and um, I go into this. Um, it's just basically a little support and resistance indicator. And what this indicator does is it shows me, you know, where there's major support and when there's major resistance. So it's showing me right now, you know, I drew this green zone anticipating prices are gonna come in there. And then it's showing me there's a major support around here. That's why the line is so super thick, you know, and uh, what I'm gonna do is around there, I might go into the market. Actually, see that line is actually off now. Hold on. Yeah, so literally that was a false line right there. It normally doesn't do that. Probably took a while to load. So what I'm gonna do is this is the zone that I'm expecting price to get to, but because the support and resistance is telling me to get to this zone, and I know I'm not meant to go in tomorrow because of uh, everything aligns much better for me on Tuesday, which is on the eighth. So what I would do is I would wait and keep my fingers crossed for price to pull into somewhere around here. If price gets here around the 80.788 and 80.578, I would gladly buy. Now it comes Tuesday, if price does not leave this green zone and price is still within this green zone on Tuesday, then what I'll do is I will buy on Tuesday somewhere within that green zone. Let me go on the one hour chart and see if I can find any support. 30 minutes. Uh, find any support right there no support so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave my green zone anyway there because i normally just draw them for myself and it helps me and uh price if price doesn't come here most likely price will be in here and what we're doing is we're trying to buy long now this trade AUD JPY, AUD jpy we go long on tuesday right and this trade, I'll call it a kind of a medium risk trade. Normally, it should be in the high range because the main reason I call it medium risk is everything looks super good, except for the fact that AUD is also meant to go short from the CO2 report. They're also selling it. But we can also see the main reason I started is because they were also buying it. So the com commercials are slightly conflicted within each other. So what happens is I would take this trade uh, going long on Tuesday, and then my exit will be next week, uh, next week, Friday. Okay. So ideally what I want to do is take at least a good chunk, maybe from here to about here, maybe 344 pips, you know, price has been unable to break the EMAs, which is the 250 and the 20. So it's tested it here. It's tested it here. So fingers crossed on the third time when price comes to test that region, it breaks and goes above. So if you get your position, below before price breaks above, they would act as support, uh, dynamic support for you, pushing price even to a higher level. So maybe here or maybe here. So within this range right here. So that would sum up the AUD JPY trade. Uh, let me see. So you guys, uh, I've checked AUD JPY, I've checked dollar, I've checked everything you asked for, GBP would check that. So that's cool. So now <clears throat> this is the trade that I've analyzed for you guys and that, that's all I have for that one. So let's quickly go and check um, NASDAQ. Someone requested NASDAQ. So let's quickly check NASDAQ quickly, um, see what's happening with that. Uh, I haven't really looked at NASDAQ in a while. I have to be honest with you because I was more focused on Bitcoin and we do really need to update the NASDAQ seasonality as well because we've changed most of the seasonality on the website. This is the old seasonality data. So, um, all right. So NASDAQ, we are at, okay. Uh, this might be very good. So on the 8th, which is on Tuesday, NASDAQ should actually be going up. Uh, I already checked on gold because the COT doesn't align with gold. We, we won't be trading gold. Euro USD. I'm going to check Euro USD, but we do not have time. We only have seven minutes left. So I can't really cram everything into that, that, that space of time. So um, uh, Euro USD, though, I, I am selling Euro USD, um, but I have to recheck. I have to do a new analysis on that just to reconfirm that I'm, I'm on the right position because I did make an impulsive move on Friday after NFP because I was anticipating the CO2 report was going to be good, but um, it wasn't as good as I thought it's going to be. So uh, so NASDAQ seems to be going up. It seems to be going bullish on NASDAQ. Um, let me see if I can find, I can find it right here. Uh, I might be able to find it. I might not. Be. Okay, here we go. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Now, so if we check the last week, I really, I mean, I told you guys last week that we might have a consolidation, we might have a pull down. So from the second, we expect NASDAQ to drop or consolidate to the eighth. And what we've seen is, uh, yeah. So NASDAQ did drop from the, uh, where is it? Where's the second? Yeah, so it did drop from the second as expected and it pulled into this region. And now, oof, bro, I'm taking this trade with you, man. <laughs> My man. Yeah, so NASDAQ is going back up. NASDAQ is going back up, right? So we expect NASDAQ to start tanking and we can hold this for the rest of the year. I know the vibes, bro. I got you. You got me, man. Thank you for reminding me. So this is quite a lot of food on the table right here, man. We might be able to pack 19,000 pips from this. So NASDAQ, we're going to trade that. We're going to trade that. We're going to go up with this one. Uh, keep in mind, though, we don't have probability data for it. We don't have COT data for it. So, but we only going on the seasonality. And seasonality told us it's going to drop on Tuesday uh, on the 2nd, in which it did drop on the 2nd till now and then we're expecting it to go back up so nasdaq will be a buy will be a solid buy now if you're new don't trade it because it's a high risk trade only people that um you know that have been trading this for a long time knows how to go around it so long um we're going on uh on the eighth okay so we're going on that on the eighth right till uh, when we going till man bro till december if you can <laughs> basically we're going in the straight till december if you can uh if you can but uh you're gonna definitely have a you know a good decent amount of trade i feel like i'm giving away free money to everybody man this is not fair it's literally not fair <laughs> so it's done its pullback as you can see nasdaq always tanks anyway so we're in that moment again in which we're expecting it to go from here all the way to december probably setting a new high this time around if the market does not crash which i don't think is going to crash anytime soon anyway they're still pumping money into it so nasdaq might be going all the way till the top till december all right so bro inflation rate that doesn't affect us right here man <laughs> literally it's gonna literally work in your favor after a while you're gonna see uh, inflation rate Basically, that would increase interest rate. Uh, and if they increase interest rate, what will happen is it will keep tanking. No matter how inflation is high, they, if they increase interest rate to balance and offset that off, what you will see is the market will tank for a long time. Eventually, hyperinflation is going to happen, which then busts the entire bubble and the price is going to crash. But for now, hyperinflation hasn't happened yet, but it is coming. So we just keep, uh, you know, taking the move that we can so nasdaq on that case will be long till december if you can so um that's it guys i mean we really have AUD JPY. we have nasdaq so that's that's all um i have for you guys today i would really love to check euro usd i do not have the time to but i will post it because i am actively in that trade already i have already committed some funds into it and i'm actually expecting it to come down i did make an impulsive move which was my bad i was too excited based on my bitcoin trade so um that being said um that's literally all i have for you guys i mean for the guys that are new um <clears throat> um so for the guys that are new what i do is uh this there's a pricing page now the website is slightly different now so the, people are going to see different prices i don't you know i don't really control it but the price is going to be slightly different so what i normally encourage most people to go for is the professional indicator tools that have all the indication that the indicators that the seasonality the probability and the cot is also there so all of those three are there on the professional indicator now depending on where you're viewing from around the world the price is going to be different for every single person now it's normally not something i normally meant to say but i will tell you guys anyway because you do attend the webinar so if you go on the pricing page and select uh, and you go there if it selects you if the system selects you it will give you a discount code there will be a discount code there that you can then import and then it will cut down the price extremely for everybody uh, and there's that yes AUDJKY and NASDAQ funny enough you already mentioned that so both of them are actually do going long as uh as you've already stated already so yeah so guys so basically the pricing page if you go to the, the website business.dmempire.co.uk forward slash pricing 
it, depending on what the system de determines for you, it will redirect you to different pricing pages, you know, and with different prices. So if you if you come here, this is the standard price. If you go to somewhere else and you know you're unlucky and the price becomes more expensive, or you can go, or you can become slightly cheaper. But uh, it, it all depends on the region of the world that you're in because uh, we do have that challenge of people being in different region and not being able to pay in specific currencies. So if you're in uh, uh, another region, let's say Nigeria, for example, it will give you a Naira page. If you're in the uh, in UK, US, it will give you this page. <clears throat> you know, if you're in Asia, it will give you a different page. So those are the things that you have to look out for. But for all we have this week is this. We only have this trades. For you to take this week, ADJPY and NASDAQ. There is still a lot more opportunity. I mean, we haven't looked at the CHF, we haven't looked at CAD, we haven't looked at the NZD. So <clears throat> we haven't even still looked at the euro. Yeah, the yearly price, you can get the yearly. If you want the yearly, just message me on um uh on Telegram and uh, we'll talk about a yearly price. Uh we'll talk about a yearly subscription. There is a discount that do come with the yearly, but it's not listed on the website. That that has to be done manually. So um that being said, this is all I have for you guys. Um, trade safe and trade responsibly and make a lot of money. If you can, trade the NASDAQ, bro. And you guys thank, uh, you know, Mr. Bilo, Mr. Babalola. He's the one that got the, the NASDAQ. He's looking at NASDAQ. BTC, I already looked into BTC, guys.